everyone and welcome back. So last time we talked about just micro interactions around like hovering, clicking, and sometimes I like to actually make just animations for great feedback. And one example of that is you saw my little kind of animation of my bouncing ball, this little notification bubble that was bouncing on a heart. And I thought that was really cool. And I think we should probably recreate that for our own project, maybe like a little bouncing ball for our cart, something like that. Now, there are different ways to create that. We can go really simple. Uh, what I did for something like this was much more in-depth. If we think about motion in general and animation in general, it must follow the laws of gravity. So what that means is if we think about how a ball bounces up and down, let me just create a circle because I don't really want to mess with that frame over here because this is where our animation is actually. So I'll show you how that works. But the one way we could think about, like, just gravity in general, we think about a ball. Uh, when a ball hits the ground, what happens to it? It doesn't just look like this. When it hits the ground, it kind of squishes just a bit. It, you don't see it. It may not squish that much. It may just, like, shrink just a little bit like that. But it still does. And when a ball propels itself upward, it stretches depending on how fast it's going. So if we're thinking about something like a really squishy ball, that's how it would look due to gravity and velocity and all different factors due to physics. So what will happen is if it bounces up and then reaches just like the max height it can go, it will start to just recede and return to normal and then after pause in the top and then start dropping down and then hit the ground like that. And then same thing. And over time, it will gradually stop bouncing, hopefully. Now, we need to apply that to our animation. So let's just delete that. Now, there are different ways we can go about doing that. We can make something really simple, just something like moving up and down. And that's, I'm going to show you how to create something really simple like that. And I'll show you an example of what I created that fold all the laws of uh, physics and just gravity in general. So let me jump right in. I have a little frame here called notification. And within that frame, I have a little layer, uh, not original naming, but I have a little layer that is going to act as our notification bubble. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a plugin, a very special plugin that is, and it is called a fake motion. And here it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my plugins, Go to Fake Motion and open Fake Motion. And it's going to open up like an overlay window. There it is. And you'll see our layers within that frame. There's one more layer. Now let me just give you a little walk around what Fake Motion is. If there's a timeline, if you've ever used something like After Effects or Premiere Pro or anything like that, ScreenFlow, they all have timelines. Now you can animate all these different properties like the X, Y coordinates, width, height, all that kind of stuff. And you can animate it based off of keyframes. So these are in 100 millisecond increments. And that is basically it. What you want to do is you want to set like a keyframe and then go ahead and you can set another keyframe. And when you click into something like that, you can adjust it. So this will move on the X uh, axis and this will move on the Y axis. Now when you're done, you can actually just play and it will, it will show you what's happening over there. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna give you an example. Um, so if I were just look at this, um, I'm gonna remove these and I'm going to select that. Why? I want to move it up and down. And if we play, we'll see that it moves down. That's a terrible animation, but you can see that we can start creating much more complex animations from something like this. So let's jump right in. I'll show you a couple of little tricks that you can do along the way and what happens after you're done exporting it. I'm going to create something really, really simple. I'm going to bring that down. Um, I'm going to update my layers because any changes over here will not be updated here unless you update them manually. So I'm just going to start at zero and I'm just going to, it doesn't really matter. Like you can select um, just different uh, points in time. So I'm just going to select 200. 
uh, milliseconds, and then we're now select another keyframe. And what I can do here is I can go into this, and I'm going to type, how about a just 20? And you can see what type of animation. So I don't like doing a linear. We can do custom if we wanted to, and it'll give us like a little graph. And we can play with that if we wanted to. But if you didn't feel like uh, actually working with the custom, uh, just the easing, you can just select ease in, ease out, ease in and out. So for this animation, I am moving upwards. Let's check what ease out looks like. So we're going to play. So that's really quick. So let's just see what the animation looks like. So you can see it's pretty abrupt and then it slows down. Now, if we use something like ease in, so it was very, very slow to move, and then it uh, gradually cut just faster as it moved in and out. So we can just do ease in and out, because uh, if we're thinking about gravity at the most basic sense, we can do that. Okay, so what I'm going to just send to, I'm going to go to one second. So it's going to take one second to get from top to bottom. But I'm going to make sure this is much larger in space. So let's even go even further. Um, <laughs> Let's do 10. Okay, so that looks good. So let's, if we play that, you see how it eased in and out? So it was kind of like it was slowly moving upward, and then when it got to the top, it was uh, slower. Now, when we come back down, let's scroll all the way to the side, so I'm going to go over to two seconds. Actually, at the top, I may just wait. So I may wait for, like, uh, just a bit. And when I get up here, I'm going to select. We're just going to stay. We're going to stay easy in and out. I'm not going to move. And then we are going to go to 2.2 seconds, which is over here. And we're going to go all the way back down. So what I need to do is I need to uh, select my Y coordinates. And I'm going to see the original. I'm just going to select that. And I'm going to paste that within here. And when I think about actually, like, something dropping, it's going to ease out. Actually, it's going to ease into it, and then it's going to drop really quick. So let's see how that looks. So up, down. Sometimes you just have to fiddle with these to get the right, the right animation. See, I didn't like that one. You saw how it slowed down again. That makes no whole sense in terms of gravity. So I'm thinking like, you know, when you hold, you get up to the top, hold, and down. Okay, so we can now start to fine-tune this a bit. Maybe that hold is only just there. Maybe we start bringing it in a bit more. So we got that seven, seven, uh, 700 milliseconds. And we can do like a half millisecond hold. And then, um, <laughs> We will go to 13. The drop should be maybe a little more quicker. So I'm going to go grab that keyframe and I'll drag it all back. The only problem is this doesn't have a way to zoom in and out uh, and grab keyframes, like just dragging and just drag to uh, select, which kind of uh, isn't the best, but this is great just working within Figma. So there we go. We have like a little, a little animation going. Now we can even go a little bit further if we think about, so this is more linear. Now I'm just gonna exit out of fake motion. So we have a little animation here. Now let's take a look at this one. Where is fake motion? I'll wear it there. Now we're at zero. You can see all the different types of keyframes I have in here just to get it right. And as you can tell, I've created like a little bounce, so it's going to squish and propel itself forward or upward, stop, return back to normal size, and 
propel itself downward and it's going to uh, shrink in width and look much more elongated. And it's going to hit the ground again. It's going to shrink and it's going to do the same thing. But this time, if you notice, when it reached that top height and then came down for the second bounce, we've lost a little bit of speed. We've lost a little bit of force. And we're not going to jump as high this time. We're not going to bounce as high, we're going to bounce just a little bit, and then just a smidge. Let's see what the ending of this looks like. So just a smidge. And then we're just going to hold. So that way, when we do create this loopable GIF, it's going to hold for like a couple of seconds afterward before it bounces again. So it's not like crazy bouncing in the corner of uh, your screen and people are going to be really annoyed with this. So let's take a look. There it goes, and it's going to hold, then it'll bounce again. Boom. So that's a quick little way to do it. I'm going to actually uh, show you how to break this down just a little bit more and um, with this one in our next video.